الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن ولا وبعض والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear Muslim brothers and sisters in Islam this is your brother Sheikh Khalid Yasin uh, speaking to you from my Facebook live platform uh, in another segment of or another episode of Sky Views. And as I always uh, try to do and clarify, uh, Sky Views are my views. Uh, this is a series of uh, discussions or propositions uh, to discuss some of the critical issues facing Muslims uh, in the 21st century. Uh, and um, I want to be very clear. Uh, uh, this is my spin, my take, uh, my opinion on some of these issues, and no one is obligated to swallow them or to embrace them. But as a senior Muslim, a senior um, social activist, uh, I am obligated to um, at least respond. Now, I'm not just responding from like a knee-jerk reaction. Uh, that would be kind of like immature. That's kind of commonplace. And this is a lot of what takes place on social media. Uh, no, when I see things, trends and things happening among the Muslims, tragedies um, <clears throat> and uh, um, challenges that take place among the Muslims, um, I try to look at it, I study it, research it, um, try to understand it. And then after that, I respond. Now, <clears throat> most of my responses, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, these are for my children, my grandchildren, my great-great-grandchildren, um, the brothers and sisters uh, who uh, I have a social responsibility towards uh, in the West. Now, in the West, for me, mostly, uh, for the most part, it means the United States of America. Uh, it could also mean, from a continental point of view, Canada. Uh, it could also mean, um, purely from a social point of view, the Muslims of the West. Now today I want to discuss uh, this recent, well it's not really even a recent, uh, there's, a, there's a trend or a recent phenomena uh, of uh, women, uh, uh, Muslim women leading congregations in prayer or giving the khutbah or becoming imams. Now, you know, there's a big re reaction to that. You know, different people say different things. You know, of course, you got those who say it's haram, haram. Uh, you got those who say it's a conspiracy. Uh, you got those who say that it's this dajalistic. You got those who say it's a sign of the times. Uh, you, there's so many different reactions. And then there's those who say that, um, uh, those who are just blaming the women themselves. Uh, so, so many different reactions uh, about this issue, and some of them could be accurate to some extent, and I'm not going to get into the reactions themselves. I'd like to talk about the issue. Now, in my estimation, this particular issue has, it doesn't just come about. It didn't just happen. A Muslim woman or Muslim women they didn't just wake up yesterday or wake up one day and just said, I'm going to be an imam. You know, I'm going to give the khutbah. I'm going to lead the prayer. I'm going to build a mosque and I'm going to get other women involved and we're going to build our own mosque. They didn't just wake up yesterday and do that. So, you know, we Muslims, you know, who just um, wait till something lands on social media, you know, it's just like as soon as it lands, we just jump on it and we just make our reactions to it. Well, you can do that, but the issue did not arrive that way. So I want to just discuss what I consider to be the atmosphere. You know, I want to discuss uh, the soil from which these actions, these extreme behaviors, how they came about. Now, you know, in one of my, my posts, I said that... Um, uh, some of the characteristics of this here is because of male chauvinism um, and um, cultural fixation and preference over others. 
uh, benign neglect of youth and women, uh, and probably, uh, 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 for the most part, even stronger than those three, weak and inept leadership. Now, these are not like uh, attacks on anybody. Uh, I'm not attacking the cultural leadership, the religious leadership, the traditional leadership. I'm not attacking Muslim men. Um, I'm not attacking anybody's culture. Um, and I am not championing. I'm not being, I'm not supporting in any way this kind of extreme behavior. I just want to open up the discussion. Now, I said that these are the main reasons behind the dysfunctional and un-Islamic behaviors that we see manifesting themselves in the Western mosques and Islamic centers. And these are not the only um, uh, uh, um, extreme behaviors. You know, in, in the, um, uh, uh, there, are mat there, are, there are now, it, um, uh, what you call it, um, movements. Uh, people have a movement to do what? Establish LGBTQ masjids. I mean, masjids for gay, lesbian, um, uh, bisexual, transvestite Muslims. Now, without getting into their behavior, their, their clinical behaviors, you know, without getting into that part of it, we understand that this is a disorder. This is an extreme behavior. And this is something that needs to be addressed, but before you address it, you have to analyze it. You have to understand it. Now, we can deal with that one. We can deal with that one later, because that's a whole nother discussion that will be discussed. But today we're just discussing this issue, this new phenomena of um, female-led congregations and the new phenomena of women becoming imams. I said that the main reasons behind this uh, dysfunctional and un-Islamic behavior uh, that we see manifesting itself in the Western mosque and Islamic centers, it is male chauvinism uh, that is excluding women uh, for whatever uh, historical reasons that it is, excluding women and men feeling that for some reason, just because they are men, that they are better than women, which is un-Islamic and incorrect. The, this cultural fixation that we have in the mosques, you know, this, you know, every group rejoicing in what is with itself, you know, every group of people rejoicing about their ethnicity, their culture, their country, where they come from, you know, their leaders, their ideas, their historical preferences, you know, this creating an environment where this becomes manifest and clear, excluding others who are not from that cultural background, excluding them from leadership and, and, uh, uh, and from meaningful um, uh, involvement. This is one of the extreme reactions to a number of systemic disorders of the masjids, especially those in Western society. Women have a right to be included in the structure of leadership. That's correct. No one has a right to exclude women from becoming part of the Majlis Ashura. Why? Why cannot a woman be on the Majlis Ashura? We're not talking about your wife sitting with somebody, sitting down next to somebody, or someone being exposed to your wife inordinately. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the minds, you see, the thinking, the energy, the ideas, the, um, the, um, the values, the resources of women being a part of the leadership of a masjid. When you constantly, consistently, and emphatically deny her, after some time, this is what you get. This is what you get. 
Number two, no cultural or ethnic group has the right to exclude members who are not part of their cultural mindset or structure or ethnic background from access to genuine leadership. But this is what happens in most of the misogynists. And we have talked about this already. In the majority of the misogynists, you know, if a Pakistani, Bangladeshi, Arab, Asian, African, you know, East European, Eastern European, or whatever ethnic group of Muslims, when they come to America or they come to Europe and they establish a mosque, if that mosque was established 50 years ago, today, you can almost guarantee that 90% or more of the people who are in leadership are from that basic ethnicity and from that basic cultural mindset and group. This is un-Islamic. And it should be unacceptable in the melting pot of America and Europe. Especially when 43% of the people who have accepted Islam, 43% of the Muslims in the West, especially America I'm talking about, 43% of them are new Muslims who have embraced Islam. So where is their place in these masjids? And of course, yes, they do have their own masjids and they got their own problems. But for the most part, when we talk about masjids in America, you know, the, um, the, the almost 6,000 masjids in the United States of America, we can say for the most part, we can say for the most part, this is the characteristic, okay, that um, is assigned to them. Now, I said that when this trend dominates any masjid, eventually you're going to get an ethnic, cultural pushback, which could be more extreme than the trend itself. In most masjids, you have elder males, you know, old guys, OGs. You know, that's what the young people refer to them. You know, in the West, they call them OGs, uh, old generation. Old guys, old girls, you know, from an Ebonic point of view, old gangsters. You find these elder males dominating the leadership, dictating policy, and creating an atmosphere comfortable for their own mindset and for their own generation. This is what you find, for the most part. In those messages, there are no real activities, opportunities, or creative programs for youth or women. The result is what we have discussed in a previous episode titled, Why the Younger Generation of Muslims Are Not Present in the Masjids. Now, you can go back to that discussion in that ap episode because it's been recorded. Uh, you can agree with it or not agree with it, but we have a, tried our best to address that. In fact, 80% of the young people and women, Muslims, they only attend the masjids occasionally or on Jummah. Now that's, that's an appalling statistic. And there's a reason for that that we need to discuss. Next, the main reason why these imbalances and extreme reactions come about is because of a weak, divided, and polarized leadership. You know, basically, they're weak uh, because they're not, um, uh, they, haven't been, they haven't been cultivated and, uh, and um, um, they haven't been cultivated and um, uh, built upon strength, strong resources, strong foundations, strong ideology. So you got weak leadership who are divided among themselves, meaning they for their own egos or what groups they belong to or what uh, leaders they follow, you know, or whatever, um, they choose, you know, to remain by themselves. You got a little cluster of groups, a little cluster of leaders over here and a little cluster of leaders over there and a little cluster of leadership over there. And they're all based upon culture or ethnicity, okay, or some kind of ideological phenomena from a historical point of view. Uh, but they're not, there is no across-the-board leadership representation. 
You don't find the leaders standing shoulder to shoulder. Every now and then they stand together to take a group selfie, you know, something like that. You know, they, they, every now and then you see 15 or 20 imams standing together, you know, in some conference or wherever, the, shoulder to shoulder and talking, but they don't meet on a regular occasion. They don't join their resources together. They don't, they don't sit down in some kind of a retreat for five days or 10 days uh, uh, with an agenda of the, the challenges facing Muslims uh, and come up with responses. You know, they don't have a, like across the board um, open discussions and um, uh, voting or nominations uh, to, to bring the different groups together to create a national profile. No, they don't do that. And they're polarized. Sufis against Salafis. You know, just as an example. You know, Sufis against Salafis. Shiites, Shiites against uh, Sunnis. You know, uh, Asians against Africans and Africans against Arabs. And it's just all this polarization that takes place from historical point of view. This weak, divided, and polarized leadership have been preoccupied with preserving their own positions is what has happened. So they failed to see. They failed to notice. They failed to respond to the cultivation of these symptoms that we are now seeing until they have manifested themselves in such a manner that we are witnessing today and now everyone is so alarmed. Well, we say in uh, uh, Ebonics, well, whoop de doo You know, you are so alarmed. It is so haram. It is so horrendous. It is so wrong. And, you know, everybody's have their own different terminologies that they use about this issue. You know, they want to blame somebody. And, okay, we can blame the women who are doing this. Are they wrong? Of course they're wrong. They're getting it wrong. But that's not going to change the situation because just because you say they're wrong, it's haram, you know, it's dajalistic, you know, it's the end of the times. You know, all these different things that you want to say, it's not going to resolve the situation. Brothers and sisters, again, I want to just make it clear, you know, before some of you say, oh, Sheikh Khalid, you can't condone this kind of an action. It seems like you're, you're making an excuse for these women doing what they're doing. I'm not making any excuse for them. I'm not the one that... Uh, promoted this action. I'm not promoting the action. I'm not condoning the action. Of course this is wrong. It is an act of rebellion. And in Islam, an act of rebellion, okay, against the fundamental principles of Islam, that's all it could be. Is it wrong? Yes, it's wrong. Of course, we should categorically reject such a display of dysfunction by the women who are, who are initiating this kind of action and the men who are praying behind them. This is, the, this is the, the issue. It's not just women doing this. This is women who have convinced men to go along with them, to pray behind them, <laughs> to let them go and give the khutbah to Jum'ah and for the men to sit down and listen to that. The men have accepted this rebellion. It is immoral. It is dysfunctional and absolutely un-Islamic. The consensus of Islamic scholars, past and present, will attest to that. But that attestation by itself will not change the reaction. What will modify th these and other extreme reactions within the Muslim body in the West is to change and modify the organizational trends. I said, we have to change 
and modify the organizational trends, the cultures of these organizations. These We're talking about now, you know, we're talking about Muslim organizations now. We're not talking about outside Islam. We're talking about Muslims. We have to change the cultural trends, the cultural behavior. We have to change these attitudes which brought about these extreme reactions. And brothers and sisters, for those of you who want to uh, deny this, you know, you just want to say it's somebody else's fault. I just want to tell you that denial is not a river in Egypt. It's a satire. <laughs> denial is not a river in Egypt. You will gain nothing by just blaming and you will gain nothing by just denying. We will gain if we sit down and discuss it and admit that you and I and others, men and women, is just as much our fault as it is somebody else's. Why? Because we have neglected to read the signs and we are probably a part of um, some group that uh, helped to promote this reaction because of your own behavior. Uh, this is your brother Sheikh Khalid Yassin just uh, trying to um, uh, stir it up. You know, um, bring about a, a certain amount of energy for us to openly discuss these kinds of issues and come up with propositions, uh, proposals, um, 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 resolutions uh, to address it. And we are not going to address it overnight. It didn't happen overnight. So day by day, week by week, year by year, and word by word and effort by effort, uh, we will address these kinds of issues uh, that are part of the uh, framework and uh, of, the, uh, of, of Islam in the 21st century and some of the challenges facing Muslims uh, uh, in the 21st century. And this is Sheikh Khalid Yassin uh, giving his views. This is Sky Views. Uh, if you would like to uh, have a, uh, a more in-depth discussion on this particular issue or any other issues that we discuss, my email is SKY, Sky, Purpose, P-U-R-P-O-S-E, at Gmail. Take the time to send me an email. Doesn't take much effort for you to text a reaction to what I'm talking about while I'm talking. It takes a little bit more effort and a little bit more control to listen to what has been said before you react. And then after that, send me an email. Um, I do have a WhatsApp number, but to be very honest with you, I'm not into chatting. So if you want to chat, get yourself a bird. You know, get a chat friend, whatever. I don't chat. I'm not interested in that. I'm using social media for purposeful communication. If you've got a Facebook page, respond on your Facebook, Facebook page, if you like. Now, as for those who have reacted constructively to what I've had to say, thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. It allows me to, uh, because I go back afterwards and I read all the reactions and then I modify my, uh, my views and my behavior, and I, uh, and I appreciate so much for you to take the time to listen to what I have to say, because you don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, I'm not looking for you to, like, um, uh, um, you know, what you call it, uh, I forget what they call it, like, to, um, to give me a, a, a high five or to like or to, I don't, I'm not looking for that. That's like popularity. Those are numbers that other people look for. I don't look for that. Uh, if you want to say you like this or you support this or anything, that's no problem. Best thing to do is for you to take, after you listen, um, digest, and then respond. And respond where you are. Uh, respond with the people that you interact with on a daily basis. And that's probably the best that we can do. Uh, that's what the Quran tells us. Uh, and, and, and let each one teach one uh, where they are. Thank you very much for listening to me. May Allah bless you where you are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in, in knowledge. May Allah protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate us. May Allah unite our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our leadership. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correct our behavior. 
We say subhanakallahum wa bihamdik wa nashadu an la ilaha illa ant wa nastaghfiruk wa natubu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.